I was assigned to the famous 1st Infantry Division, the oldest division in the United States Army. We was in the forefront of putting every big battle that there was. They wouldn't have had the invasion of Normandy if they couldn't have had the 1st Division to land there with them. The darkest, uh, most worthless feeling I ever had in my life came over me at the time I was taken prisoner. And uh, you can't imagine how worthless I felt feeling like I'd let my country down. They put us in an old cargo boat. Right away, our airplane started coming over and they spotted us. You'd hear a fleet of them come over and then you'd hear one peel off and you know he was diving at us and he'd turn all these cannon and machine guns, 50 caliber machine guns on and strafe us as they'd come down and when you'd hear them pull out, you'd know that bomb was on its way. So then you'd cover up your head and and wonder if this was your last breath or not. They bombed us and strafed us a lot of times, and, and uh, finally they got us to sinking, and then uh, the boats kind of settled on this sandbar and didn't go clear under. And we got up on top, and the Germans had taken everything that would float and took off. We arrived back in England and was prepared to make the landing on D-Day in Normandy. We was in that little 30-man landing craft, and they let the front down, and we come piling out of there. So many bullets going around like a swarm of bees, it seemed like. There were so many that had been killed in the water that the water right next to the sand on the beach had turned a blood color. There were that, that many people that had been killed before they even got to the beach. We took the ground where the Normandy Cemetery is. 9,500 of my good friends are buried there in that cemetery. At times I felt that the Lord was looking after me or I wouldn't be here now. This one particular time we was out going across an open field and they hit us with a whole bunch of mortar and one lit right the side of me and that thing was a dud, it didn't go off. And how do you account for things like that? So many times you get to thinking, oh my word, I, I shouldn't have lived through that, you know. Somebody was really looking after me. You don't go to war to win medals. You go to win the war, and that's the only way you can get home. You get all these medals, you know, the Good Conduct Medal and the Victory Medal and the, all the you know, a dozen medals I could wear, I guess, if I wanted to, but they didn't mean much to me, like uh, the Silver Star and the Bronze Stars and the Combat Infantry Badge, and, and uh, those uh, mean a lot to me because I know where they come from. I met Quentin uh, back in my teenage years, and of course the Murdochs were uh, early pioneers uh, in our area. I just uh, had this desire that I had to farm. I, I couldn't stand this wearing a white shirt and sitting in the office very long. So I decided to, I'd just go out on the desert and I'd drill me a well out there and I'd make me a farm. This ground, it just doesn't lend itself to irrigation. I had seen a, a single sprinkler someplace where somebody's watering a little pasture or something. And I thought, I wonder why that wouldn't work on the whole farm. And since it was a hopeless situation to me, it seemed like I went and ordered a sprinkler system for the whole farm. After working with him and working with sprinklers and the development of the sprinkler systems, uh, that was a goal of mine is to put sprinklers on farms. And since that particular time, why that's been a whole pivot point in my whole life as far as my business. I found myself unemployed kind of in the winter time. The winters are quite long up there. And so I started building some cattle pens. And the potato processing plant came to Blackfoot, and I figured, well, they must have a waste product. And I know cattle like and do well on potatoes. So I'll go in and see them and see about getting their waste product. And I went in there, and they let me have it. Quentin's always been a hero to me. And, and I think a lot of times the reason he was preserved, I think, is for what he's done in our area and to the people around him. And he's been a great example to everybody.